Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 Overload. I am Peter, and that over there is Matt. Yep. We talk about movies on this show. This is our monthly movie show. Obviously, we have other movie review shows where we talk about new movies. That's Gigawatts. We talk about older movies with Connor. That's uh, in flux. This is our monthly show, and this one's obviously a special monthly show. This is the one where our patrons vote every month. The, the format of this show is simple. Uh, I pick a movie that I love. Matt picks a movie that he loves, and we put it up on Patreon.com as a vote. Uh, Mail Fuzz TV on Patreon, and our mm-hmm. patrons vote for which one we'll do. Uh, and this makes the third in a row for Matt, I it's, think. It's starting to become a streak. Because uh, last time we did. Was that, that thing you do? Uh, that was last time. And the time before that was oh, La La Land. Yeah. That thing you do, and now the big six. Yeah, so that's three in a row. Uh, so with a bit of luck, the patrons will swing my way for the next one. Or not. I mean, we all want to make Pete watch The Rocketeer finally, right? Like, uh, I don't think anyone cares what I think of The Rocketeer, Matt. <laughs> oh, I care what you think. <laughs> well, you care what I think. I don't think anyone else does. I care. Because... Uh, Joe, Joe, really, Joe, Joe, bug me. The reasoning, like, because you know, some of our patrons will comment saying why they're voting mm-hmm. one way or the other, right? And it was like, oh, I think Peter will like Matt's pick more than Matt will like Peter's. No, make him feel the pain, make him hurt, make him be miserable. No, see, that's the problem is you, you went too early with Under the Skin. Had had Under the, the Skin <laughs> been like six movies in, it would have been different. But you, you like they felt sympathy you for you, yeah, on that one. <laughs> Yeah, well, the funny thing is, is, is my pick for this one that lost three iron, I don't actually think you wouldn't have liked I actually think you, yeah. you'd have appreciated well, that. Well, I but... think we learned to the point where we're not going to try to... After La La Land, I realized <laughs> that was my vengeance. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not the Punisher here, you know? Which is funny, because my pick for next month, which is currently up for vote, if you've not voted your patrons yet, your patrons, uh, is Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. Not, not not because it's meant to be vengeful, but as, no. as you said that, and I thought it amused me that my I next picks. It, it's, got that I, I try to find movies that you might not have seen and that I really enjoy, and I feel like you'll do the same. You know, well, I'm, that's, I'm not the, a sh- that's the point, yeah. is that we pick a movie we love that the other person hasn't seen. That's kind of yeah. the, the format for, of the show. For two months, though, it became, let's try to screw with this guy as much as possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we, we lost our, our way, but, you know. I've got I've got a few more. Uh, how should I, how, what should I how should I phrase this? I have a few more weapons of mass destruction in the bunker. Yeah, as as do I. <laughs> for if the occasion calls for it. Yeah, as as do I. Should should my uh, tempt fate? But we're going to talk about the big sick, which is what won this month. Uh, this is this is the this is actually twenty seventeen. This is the newest movie we've done yeah. in Overload. Uh, yeah. This is a. I guess I'll call it a romantic comedy, although I, th- mm-hmm. I feel like romantic dramedy is maybe a more apt title. It's more more yeah. of a drama with, with comedic elements than it is just an all-out comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's actually starring uh, Camille Nanjiani. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Camille Nanjiani. Nanjiani, there you go. Camille yeah. Nanjiani. Uh, he plays essentially himself, because actually I did not know this was based on a true story when I started watching it. Uh, and I'm kind of glad I didn't. Because I actually added some suspense to a few things that wouldn't have had suspense had I known it was based on a true story. So, I, I can't wear I've known about Camille for a while. I, I listened to the, the... I used to listen to the Nerds Podcast, Family, mm-hmm. and he would pop in there. He's really close with Chris Hardwick. Uh, he's also on Silicon Valley. He plays Dinesh. Uh, yeah, not seen that show. I, I, I think I'd oh, seen his yeah. face, maybe, and that was it. Yeah, well, he had Camille and Emily on, Chris Hardwick did, on Nerdist to talk about this uh, right around the time it came out. And hearing them talk about it, Made me want to see it more. Like it was already on my radar, but uh, so I, I feel that was the opposite of yours. I knew going in because they they went in depth. Oh, I'd never heard about of this. what really happened. But yeah, when, when you picked this, I'd never heard of it. It wasn't on my radar at all. Really? Uh, oh. Somehow, I, I, I just it, it flew by me. Um, yeah. Interestingly, I'd heard someone else mention it in a podcast recently, but that was like after like it was already been up for the yeah. vote and whatnot. Uh, sure. So th- this is basically a story of how how Camille meets uh, Emily. And she, uh, they, they kind of hit it off. They have a bit of a budding romance, and it's kind of sweet. And then they have a bit of a fight. But then she gets sick, and he just kind of by happenstance ends up being the one at the hospital dealing with the situation. And he ends up a lot, a large part of the movie ends up being about him kind of existing with her parents, even though they'd never met before this. This is the first mm-hmm. time he meets her parents. And uh, it's, it's very awkward. There's a lot of awkward humor and some other stuff mixed in. And I don't want to go any further than that uh, for, for spoiler sake. But the, the it's kind of about that. It's about him taking all this responsibility on when he really only knew her for a month or two before this happened, and they weren't yeah. even in a good place in terms of the relationship when it happened. Uh, yeah, and it kind and, of and even though romance is at 
at the middle of it, I feel it's a relationship between families because mm. it's him with his own family and then uh, Kumail with her family. And yeah, that's lot, really the crux. Yeah, a lot of it's about his family's kind of pressuring him into like an arranged marriage because that's their culture. Yeah, traditional. Um, and there's a lot of that going on. So there's a lot of this, which I guess is very relatable for uh, people in our age group, you know, late 20s, mm-hmm. early 30s, where you're, 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 I mean, you're married, so you're, you're kind of, yep. you're, you're settled. But And it wasn't arranged before well, people start throwing that out there. <laughs> Why would anyone <laughs> assume it was arranged, man? I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting in a Superman room. It would uh, assume, like, no sane woman would sign up for that. Who said, no, said, did. Yeah, who said Ashley's sane? Like that, yeah, that. that's true. She... <laughs> Her car is themed to Captain America, so I really can't. I, I've, yeah. I've heard, I've heard her shout. Yeah, I've heard well, her shout. I've, I've heard... So she almost broke her toe on a thing, and it sounded like. Oh god, that was so good. Yeah. That was that was yeah. such a good outtake moment. <laughs> it was hard, was hard in so, pain, uh, in yeah. the distance. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to talk about the movie. We'll keep it spoiler free at first. We'll warn you about spoilers before we jump into spoilers somewhere in the middle, uh, and we'll go with that. So, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of spoiler free because I feel like to really talk about it, I want to talk yeah. about where the plot goes. But just simple things first of all: uh, acting, character structure, uh, pacing, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Uh, and just in general, if you liked it. Now, obviously, you like. It. Normally, I ask the other pers- yeah. person, "Did you like it?" But yeah. obviously, you did because you you picked it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start off with a bold statement here, Matt. You didn't like it. This is... This is now the benchmark of your picks Uh that you now have to beat because this is the best movie you've picked. Oh, okay. That's fine by me. This was great. This was was bordering on fantastic. Okay. Uh, because I thought you were going the other way. No, no, no. I, 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 this is the most enthusiastic I've been on one of your picks so oh, far. Good. I was very pleasantly surprised that it was not trash because you like yeah. a lot of trash. And... I do. <laughs> I, and I haven't unsheathed the trash yet. You know, <laughs> hopefully I won't have to. But, uh, you know, this. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it because this. I, I know how you are with your taste, and so I, when it comes to like real world stuff, like. I, you can be real hit or miss, as far as I know. It depends. Like, you it de- like your Lynchian elements. You like your sci-fi. Oh, you sure, like your yeah. horror. You know, so... This, uh, do you know what's funny to me about this? Is that this, for me, falls into the comedy that I like, that I would yep. put right next to Little Miss Sunshine, and you hate Little Miss Sunshine. I do. Because <laughs> I feel like the humor here more resonates with me than the stuff in Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's the exact same, but yeah. I, put, I put them in the same kind of league, where they're kind of this... Sort of more of a, a drama comedy where there's more going yeah. on and more to say than a, a typical comedy would have. Yeah, well, uh, the, the comedy's added for flourish. I wouldn't say it's a comedy first, even though I feel this is one of the funniest movies I saw last year. Yeah, e- even though the uh, main character's job is a stand-up comedian and there's a lot of stand-up but, scenes, yeah. Yeah, but it's not a funny story. It's not, you know, his his kind of girlfriend is sick and he doesn't know how to deal with this. Yeah. You know, she's in a coma. I mean, that, that, that's not even yeah. just sick. She, I mean, once she yeah. gets to the hospital, she's basically put in a coma right, quite quickly yeah. and it's him dealing with her parents and every, like his yeah. own parents and everything else around and exactly. all that stuff going on. And uh, then there's comedy, just like life, comedy comes from those elements, uh, mm. but it's not, at never any point do I feel like it's trying to be funny, which I, I found as I get older and watch more things, I have a problem with movies that are going so far to be funny. And I don't feel yeah. this one stretches. No, there's a, there's a natural humour to this. Uh, let's talk about the cast. So obviously you get Camille, who's very good. He's, I mean, he's played yep. himself, so naturally you th- expect yeah. him to be good. Uh, he's very likeable as himself. He's very likeable so. in a very realistic way. He, he comes from this place where everyone expects him to be a certain way because he's from Pakistan. And oh. it, like the, right from the start of the movie, he's like, no, no, no. All these things about me are different than what you expect. Like you assume all these things because of my my upbringing and where I'm from. But really, like this, this, and this. Like quite quickly, you see a shot of the dead poster on his wall, and it's like, okay, yep. right, he's he's not exactly your stereotype in your head. I, I didn't catch the movie that he makes Emily watch uh, on one of their what? dates. It was uh, the Vincent Price. Do you yeah, know what it was? I don't know what that was. I've seen that movie. It was the uh, abdominal Doctor Phoebes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was what it's you know. It could be easy, you know, just to pull any random movie, but of I course. feel like he, the of real course. Kumail loves this movie, yeah. so that's why it was written in. Of course, the first movie they watch is Night of the Living Dead, which yeah. I'm assuming he does love, but I do have to poke a hole in this. 
This movie uh, shows up all the time in movies because it's public domain and they don't have to pay yeah. for it. So I kind of like chuckled because me and Tim have this joke because joke, it always pops uh, up in screams where there'll be like a movie because we watched The Void last year and it's, uh, The Void was a fun movie but at one point someone's watching a movie and it's Night of the Living Dead and I'm like, I wonder why because <laughs> they don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's a fun thing to notice. But he, he's very likeable, he feels very real, and him fighting against the, the stereotype of his culture is a really endearing little story to kind of like get yeah. from that, and there's a real human core. Uh, Zoe Kazan plays Emily, who I've been seeing a lot of in the last couple of yeah. years, actually. She she was in a horror movie in 2016 called The Monster, which I actually quite yeah. liked. Uh, she was in I, need, that. I think that popped up on Netflix, and I need to watch it, because I hear it's... Uh, it probably did, yeah. Tim didn't yeah. like it very much, though, but I liked it quite a bit, so you can... T- Tim's a crapshoot. Sometimes I line up with him, most of the time <laughs> I don't, though, so... So you can you can pick yeah. your side upon upon viewing. Yeah. Uh, but I really like her. She popped up in The Deuce this, uh, this past season oh, of that, the first season of that. Okay. She was in a couple of episodes of that. Uh, and she was in something else recently as well, but... Like, I feel like I didn't know who she was like a year and a half ago and then all of a sudden she's been popping up in a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, which I'm actually surprised with her age. I, I just, when I was looking through the cast here, I noticed she was like 35 and I'm like, oh, I didn't realise she was that old. Yeah, uh, well, and she's Ilya Kazan's granddaughter, you know, on the waterfront. Oh, cool. Like, I don't know. Any I, other I, movies. I don't yeah. know, know though that. I mean, obviously I recognise the name, but I, I, I don't assume that everyone with that name is yeah. related. Well, the first time I encountered her was a couple of years ago. There's this movie with Paul Dano called Ruby Sparks. Do you know? Where this... I've not seen that, seen it? but it's been on okay. my to-watch list for a long, long time, and I'm yeah. surprised... Did you like it? I did like it. I liked it a lot. Do, uh, do, do you know like, that's from the producers of uh, Little Miss Sunshine? I'm, I'm sure with Paul Dano. Yeah. But just... uh, that, that came across back when I used to have the physical Netflix. That was one that I had to wait for a while. So I, I don't think like I'm biased towards it because the wait was there, but I did enjoy it a whole lot. I mean, a lot of the themes that were there. Been, Joe, it's actually one of those things where it popped up. Do you know in the IMDb you have the you know mm-hmm. movies kind of related to this one in a way? Yeah. It came up saying Ruby. I was like, oh yeah, I wanted to see that because it was from some people involved in Little Miss Sunshine. And I clicked on it and went, holy shit, I came out in 2012. I thought that came out like a year ago yeah. and I've, I've been putting it off. It's, I've been putting this off for six years now. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah, it might end up on a on a pick list. Hey, Matt. The line. Do, do, you want, do you want to feel old? Yeah, go ahead. It's been 10 years since The Dark Knight. I know. I know. It's insane. I and I'm getting to that point in my life where I can remember things from 20 years ago, so 10 doesn't seem that much. But yeah, I I remember going to the IMAX, making that trip to the Dark Knight on a and and then calling out from work the yeah. next day because no way I was going after that. Yeah, because 20 years ago I was still a kid. 10 years ago yeah. I was you know I, I, I'll be turning 29 next year. I was 19. Like I, yeah. I this is insane that 10 years ago is this now. Yeah. I feel like 10 years just went away quickly. Like where did it go? Yeah. But hey, but, uh, but yeah, so so <laughs> she she's very good now. She, they've, they've got really good mm-hmm. chemistry, which is the first thing I, I really sort of latched on to is, mm-hmm. is, is like a hook for the movies. That as soon as they start talking to each other, you're kind of drawn into their their budding mm-hmm. romance where they're, they're kind of firing insults back and forth, but it's in like a, a, a fun spirited way. And it, they have this bond. It's great. It feels like a real relationship. It doesn't feel yeah. manufactured. Uh, his her parents uh, are Holly Hunter and Ray Romano. Ray Romano, who actually has acting chops beyond playing yeah. himself in his sitcom. He, this is like I like Everybody Loves Raymond. I'm not like a huge fan of it, uh, but I haven't watched too much Ray Romano outside of that. Uh, I thought he's done he's, a whole lot outside of that. Really, I mean, he's not no, the odd I mean, movie he, role. He has, I think, but no, he's had some other TV shows that have popped up and. You know, uh, a couple movies here and there, but he is so damn funny in this. I love, I love yeah, her dad good. so much because he's so awkward with everything. Yeah. Also, I love that there's a running gag that he's he's really bad at telling jokes, which is really funny yeah. given that he's really a comedian. I just think that's really exactly. funny. Uh, but like, he he, they're both really likable. That the, they have they, again, they have good chemistry together. They have good chemistry with him. Uh, everyone has chemistry. This is a very well cast movie. Everyone yeah. uh, feels genuine. Everyone's sort of bonding you know colliding uh all of camille's friends the other stand-up comics that are all kind of around yeah. backstage all these little gigs they do uh yeah they're pretty funny they're constantly like riding each other really hard they're, his roommate is this asshole his roommate. and he's not what well, i say uh, asshole he, he's a bit of a loser and he's really bad at stand-up comedy and like he's yeah. always really bad uh and it's just he, he's a lovable yeah he's a lovable jerk type that i just he's always there with the right thing to say and he just his lines cracked me up too because they were so random, like it felt very ad libbed. Like you can't write for that character if that was that actor. Uh, and he's another stand up, Kurt Braun. Oh, I, I assumed all of his friends were actually yeah. stand up com- com- comedians. Like, I just, uh, the, it made the sense girl was Eddie Bryant. She's been on SNL for the last 
bunch of years. And then the other mm. one is Bo Burnham, who he's a pretty uh, pretty well known stand up. Uh, he started pretty young. Do you know what's actually, there's a, just a thing early on in the movie where they establish there's, there's like a, a producer or something in the crowd who, yeah. who does like comedy shows uh, uh-huh. and they try to impress him. Fr- from a distance, I thought it was John Hamm and then it went in close. Yeah. Like, oh, that's not John Hamm at all. No. <laughs> this is some Which other dude. Su- but... Had it been John Hamm, it wouldn't have surprised me because he's big for doing little movies like this because mm. uh, he's a former theatre teacher uh, and he likes smaller things after being on Mad Men from what I've heard. So, But yeah, it's not him. Uh, yeah, sadly. Uh, and another big plot point in the movie is that uh, Camille's mother and or the, his family in general, really, he goes for family dinner yeah. every week, and every week his mother, trying to arrange a marriage, sort of goes, "Oh, I wonder who that could be." When the doorbell rings, and like another girl that she's hoping will hit it off with him, another uh, Pakistani girl. Yeah, yeah, they're all because that's the thing they want him to marry a Pakistani woman. Right. And he, you know, at one point he points out the the weirdness of this is like, "Why did you come to the U.S. if you wanted me to like live by?" Strict well, traditional the American way. Yeah, yeah like it, yeah, it's, it's a bizarre contradiction that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but so so this is going on, and these are all the things that are happening, and they all everyone has chemistry. Everyone is like bouncing off of each other. It is a very natural casting yeah. across the board. Uh, I can't. Him and his brother at the batting cage. I thought I've mm. had those conversations with friends, you know, where he's like, "Oh look, he looks like Pakistani Sammy Sosa," but he's whiffing on everything. Like it just again. It feels genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The jokes that are going... Sometimes the jokes will go to a darker place and they'll acknowledge it's a darker place and they'll be really funny. And when it's friends like riding each other, it makes sense. There's one... I won't spoil, uh, but there's one between uh, Camille and Ray Romano uh, that goes super dark out of nowhere and Camille cracks a joke that I was I did not see coming and it absolutely broke me. Uh, is it about I, New York? It is. I had to pause it. Yeah. I had to uh, pause it. It, it, it broke me so hard. Uh, and especially the way that they don't laugh at it and he has to explain it was a joke uh, as well. Yeah. But I won't spoil the joke. It was it was too no. good to spoil. Uh, but everything's very... So all the chemistry's very good and the emotions feel real. It feels kind of like... Um, it's, it's got that thing going for it where the characters are real enough. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm watching some Hollywood movie. It feels like this genuine no. personal project where they really wanted to nail... Uh, the emotions behind everything. It didn't feel sappy in, in the way that I'd expect this. Because I think when I read the plot, you said, okay, we're doing this movie a big sec, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I looked at the plot, and I'm like, okay, I can kind of see what this is going to be. This had a genuine realism to the humour and the awkwardness to the way the characters reacted to things that yeah. made it feel real. And you cared about the characters. You, you cared about them, you know, like if she ever wakes up, mm-hmm. can they reconcile? You hope they do. Well, uh, yeah, because there's the whole thread around the, you know, third act break that is you know you're all in you know in the way that kumail reacts and the parents react you know it, yeah because like, he has this weird thing where he bonds with the parents you know while mm-hmm. she's in a coma and like it's, it's, in, it's a really interesting dynamic that it's different from other romance movies that it feels like no that's a very unique take on things uh, yeah. i can't i can't i can't you know praise him too much for it or praise the writing too much for it because it's just based on a real thing <laughs> but it yeah. handles it well but but I feel like you can't adapt it a hundred percent from reality, so you have to add things. Oh, of course, of course. In there, and and I feel that's the fact that they were still able to make it feel that real. Where I'm questioning. But what I'm saying oh, is is the 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 core premise of he bonds with the girl's parents yeah. before he's met them oh, yeah. when she's in a coma. I feel like that's something that. Like, I mean, a Hollywood writer could have thought of that, but, like, yeah. they didn't. This was something that came yeah. out of a, a natural place of this just happened. And it's so it's it's too insane of a of an awkward idea not to do it as a movie. Yeah. And, and there's always that writing thing where you can't lean on, but, you know, it's true. Like, so here, that's what I like what they did was they added, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? They pumped up the, the reality of it by adding some, you know, more movie... Uh, what am I trying to get out of here? Tropes, you know. Yeah, yeah, I guess they're they're tropes, but you know, by by puffing up the the stuff that's not real, it makes the stuff that is real stand out. Which it gets to the point where I'm like, well, I wonder if any of this happened. Like his one man show, like he has this whole thing early in the relationship where he mm. has this super long, pretentious kind of <laughs> one man show about Pakistan. And it's like, well, did Kumail really have that, or is this standing in for something else that he did? Like, 
Yeah, like is, it, is, it, is it just swapping it out because whatever he actually did would, wouldn't yeah. be good for a movie. But this was this is funnier, yeah. so they did this instead. But it, it hits the same beats maybe that, that would have been exactly. Hit. Yeah, obviously, yeah, and obviously, yeah, you imagine that he was very much involved in the writing process. If he didn't outright write it himself, I don't know if he did. Let me check. Yeah, uh, Camille wrote it. Yeah, he, he co-wrote. Camille yeah. and Emily. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Uh, so I think we'll give the spoiler warning so we can talk about things yep. a bit more. Um, so full spoilers. Although I feel like like inadvertently you, you kind of have spoiled some of it already because you keep talking about Emily as if she's alive which tells you she lives <laughs> because I did not know that when I watched the movie Gotcha. I am actually glad that I did not know anything about this story because it actually made the suspense of well not mm. A. if she survives and B. Yeah. if she actually if they get together at the end because I didn't know if they did and if you yeah. know that they're so, married in real life it's like well obviously yeah so that that's that's not that you're wrong. I don't want this to come out like you're wrong yeah. for that. I just, because of the, you know, I'm not into the comedy culture. Not like Tim is, but I, I have a foot in it. So mm. I'm familiar with them. I've seen their show. They had a stand-up show on Comedy Central that they emceed, you know, every, that was on, you know, for a while. Yeah. So I knew them as the couple before I knew them as the movie characters. Yeah. I knew I knew nothing about them, and I, I bizarrely think it made the movie even better, because I didn't... Well, that's good. Because I, I didn't even... Like, I didn't even know it was a true story. It wasn't until like it cuts to the black at the end and it says, "Here's the real Emily." And I'm like, "Oh, oh, this yeah. was a this was a real thing." Okay, <laughs> oh, good. Like, uh, because for me, the final moment, the the final, like, you think it's all like, oh, he's left off to go to New York because once she wakes up, uh, she's like, she appreciates what he did, but it's like, you know, for you, you've had all this time to pass where you've like changed and done things. But for me, I just woke up and it was things were just the way they were yeah. before. It's you know, it's very naturally awkward when she wakes up again, and mm-hmm. their parents like him a lot, but she's like still pissed at him. Oh. It's, it's, it's this that, weird dynamic. We're, we're talking about how genuine it is, and when Holly yeah. Hunter, when he comes to her apartment for her, you know, wake up party, you know, you're you've gotten well, and Holly Hunter walks past him and just touches his face. Yeah, in like a caring mom way, like you're just like, oh my god, I, I yeah. buy that. Uh, yeah, I'm in spoilers, so I I will spoil uh, one joke here that I like. She's she's given something to drink when she wakes up, uh-huh. and she like spits <laughs> in. She's like, oh, that's really thick and weird. What is that? It's like, oh, we have to thicken it up because uh, yeah, you you you, you, you can't swallow it yet. Uh, it's like it tastes like semen, and then Ray Romano was at the side. He just goes, yeah, that's something every father wants to hear from his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. He's so funny, just and he's not again, not trying to be. It feels genuine that a dad would say that, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's a real the, the humor feels like something that friends and family members would say to each other, and not just yeah. like super like tacked on Hollywood. Like, uh-huh. oh, this is a big joke moment. Yeah. Um, and the, even the way that he awkwardly like, stands outside the door and he's scared to go in feels like a really. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like everyone, well, whether it's this specific type of like hospital room moment or what or what not, I feel like everyone in their life is nervous about something and like hangs out the door awkwardly as if they're not sure if they yeah. should go in. Like I feel like we've all been in that kind of moment. Well, yeah, you're kind of waiting for an invite, and you yeah. kind of deep down you don't want the invite, but you're like, yeah. uh, what do I do? And yeah, it's that thing. Yeah, and he he has that 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 stand up gig, you know, in the middle of the whole thing where mm-hmm. he breaks down and because he thinks she's going to die, and he, he just stands up yeah. there. He's like, I can't do stand up comedy when I think my my kind of girlfriend's dying. Like yeah. I'm in love with her and. Uh, yeah. and it was really hard when she sees the video with that she's still mad at him she's like told him to stay away and she sees the video and you're like oh maybe and she comes to see him and you get the impression that if she says don't go to New York that she, he'll stay but she yeah. never does like it's left in this awkward thing like yeah, so they're very like civil teachers like, okay well, well you know I'm going off to New York good luck with that glad you're mm-hmm. feeling better okay and it's like and he actually gets in the car and he leaves and we'll talk about all this stuff with the family and whatever but and I was like, oh, maybe this ends with this sort of mutual respect thing where, you know, it because you, you could argue at this point, again, not, not knowing it was based on a true story and thinking it's just yeah. the, what the movie is. Mm-hmm. At this point, I'm thinking, well, if they don't get together, the movie still works because it's more of a growth thing for him because he, he was lying to his parents for so long. Not just about the fact that he was into this girl the whole movie, but the fact that yeah. he didn't even pray anymore. He didn't care about any of this. He didn't yeah. believe in any of this. He, he Like, he'd been living this lie. And this experience was a, a, a learning and growth experience for him. He had an arc. So the movie worked even if they didn't get together, but he secretly hoped yeah. it did because they had such good chemistry. Yeah. Uh, so that moment at the end where he's doing his stand-up bit in New York and she like makes the same you know woohoo noise that she did at the start when they first met it mirrors the exact scene and she says the exact same thing 
and he's, he's like, hey, that's still heckling, even if it's a positive mm-hmm. thing, which harkens back to the first conversation they ever had. Yep. And she says the exact same thing. Yeah, but what if I yell, you're really good in bed? Um, mm-hmm. And it, the movie ends with like him saying, like, you know, so if, so you're in town, you're out of town, you're here to see someone. Have you, have you seen them? And she just says yes, and she smiles, and it cuts to the credits. It yeah. is a fist pumping good time. It's, you know, it's, it's that, yes. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy it's, and like, it's good the, still exists in this world. It's the 11th hour save. It's like you think, yeah. no, okay, sure, they've both grown a lot. There's positive stuff came out of this journey, but you're feeling a little bit down, a little bit bittersweet, and then it's just at the 11th hour, you get that final good moment, and she smiles, and you, it's okay, they're going to be together, it's fine, happy ending. And like I say, it would have worked without it, and obviously, knowing it's a true story, it, it would never have not been that, right. but the way it's played, if you don't know what the story is, I think it actually works really well. Uh, and I, I was I was super into this movie uh, through all this various stuff, and I like that. So go, to go back to his parents and the, the, the family stuff, I like that. So throughout the movie, he's like pretending to go through all these motions, and all these girls are coming by, and he's putting their photos in the box and uh, all the rest of it. And when it eventually comes out, where he just says, because he doesn't show up to one of the the, the, the dinner dates, and yeah. when, it, when it comes out, like. And the parents come around to like harass him. He's like, "Hey, look, I'm in love with someone called Emily. I love her. Uh, I'm never going to be into this arranged marriage thing. It's just not for me. You know, I don't even pray anymore." And he confesses, and his mother just, his parents flat out disown him right there on the spot. They're like, "No, you're not my son." Yeah, I, I always feel like it's more mom than it is the rest of the family because she's so into the. She, she, she's the strong. You know? it, it definitely, it's mother, father, and then the brothers a few notches down. Uh, yeah. where he, he could always feel like the brother doesn't really care that much but he, he, no. he's expected to care so he's like I, yeah, I do love the line that the brother has about he's like yeah you know when I got together with my wife it was awkward for the first year or two <laughs> but eventually <laughs> she becomes your best friend and Camille's like yeah okay Thanks. Yeah. That. Speak, speaking yeah. of the, uh, the 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 on point humor uh, during that scene, they're in like a, a fast food place, and mm-hmm. when he tells his brother he's into a white girl, he's like a white girl, and then like yeah. Yeah, this is the white family turn around and look over, yeah. and Camille's just like, oh no no so, so, sorry, we're, we're we're against terrorism, and he just goes back to yeah. his food. Like that's a really funny funny moment. Uh, yeah. He plays with all that stuff. Um, so. So you got all that, and I, I like that when he's leaving from New York, like it doesn't do this neat, neat wrap up. It does this very sort of human thing, where like the mom stays in the car, and the dad comes over and gives him some food that she's made. Yeah, she's very upset, but you're having this because you know yeah. family reasons. And he's like, "Yeah, you're not in this family anymore. Uh, like, you know, whenever we're gonna, this is the big goodbye. We're never going to see each other again." But by the way, when you get to New York, calls and let us know you're okay. And it was yeah. that, it was that like little humorous hypocrisy, <laughs> like just to add yeah. into like. Yeah, we're going through all these motions, but you know, as time passes, like they're going to get used to this. And they even uh, bring that up earlier in the movie, actually, with uh, uh, her parents, where, the, where Ray Romano was like, "Oh yeah, at first yeah. her parents hated me, uh, but after time, a lot of awkward dinners, like things kind of worked out." Yeah. And when you see the real photos at the end, and you see their actual wedding, and how like his parents are there, you, you can tell that eventually that everything worked out. Yeah. Like they got over it. it. Just. Yeah, and I just I like the idea too that he got in good with the parents before, so it's not as awkward of a transition for him. Yeah, you yeah. know, and and you know, and then Emily's that uh, type that they'll just take her in as easy as they did with Kumail. So again, it, it makes you feel like there's good still in this world. It, do you know what? It's all it's all, my almost my only disappointment with the movie is that we never get the two sets of parents meeting each other. Yeah. Or whenever you get to see Emily meet his parents, like I think that would yeah. be, hey, that's a sequel right there. Is Emily yeah. hanging out with his parents for a whole movie? Yeah, like something there happens. There's a snowstorm or something, and he can't get back yeah. home, and she arrives at the house, and it's just her and his parents. Oh, there I, you go. I wouldn't be, you know, I, I'd go see that. You know, the the big uh. sickening, <laughs> an even bigger sick. Uh, that's a sequel, big big yeah. sicker. Uh, uh. But uh uh, so no, I love all that stuff, um, and especially those moments that are genuinely touching. Obviously, everything with Emily and him caring about her being sick, everything like that is touching as shit. Uh, here's the thing: there's a up until there's a there's a scene where Emily's parents go to his comedy show, which he didn't even yeah. technically have. He, he kind of lied about it, and then because he knows the guy, well, he, he got on stage for the last ten minutes. Yeah. So the whole the whole point of that was when you were talking about he misses the family dinner. Mm. He had to go to family dinner. Yeah, that's what he was supposed to go to. Yeah. Yeah, and he's trying to get away from her parents without saying, like, oh, I have to go to family dinner, 
which I think would have been the easier. You just go, I'm supposed to be meeting my family. I have to go. Yeah, you wouldn't have to explain uh, that, but yeah. No, right? But he ends up making it uh, a bigger deal by going, oh, I have a comedy show. And Ray Romano's like, hey, we, well, maybe we should go. Yeah. Oh, but it's sold out. Yeah, but you said you're headlining. You can get his end. It's fine. Uh, yeah. And so they go and he gets put on, you know, just as a, a tag at the end. And, and he's doing okay. Because you see them. Yeah. Usually, I mean, Holly Hunter's kind of just looking at her tablet, just kind of being focused. But... Yeah, well, she's you know, her daughter's really sick. They don't yeah. know what's wrong with her. She's not in the headspace for comedy. But Ray Romano's laughing. He's, he's, he's getting into the yeah. jokes. And it's going okay. And then some asshole shouts out an, an ISIS uh, heckle. He's like, I'll go back to ISIS. And Holly Hunter... It's like as much as she's not like this guy and she's been very standoffish, yeah. she turns around and like just grills the shit out of this guy. Because and it's yeah. actually really funny because she's like, "Wait, you want ISIS to have more people? Is that your logic here? Huh? Are you a recruiter? Is that what this is?" And yeah. it just it goes on and it's it, it, it's really touching because she's sticking up for him even though she's not like him. But yeah. she's making it. But it's also very funny because the like the things she's saying are actually really witty. It, the, everything yep. about it really really works and. Uh, that's kind of the start of the bond, and then later on that night, like they're getting drunk together and they're eating food, yeah. and like she, she's showing pictures of uh, of uh, Emily when she was a goth in high school, yeah. and like it's it's great, just, again, it's very very most, steering. <laughs> most notable noticeable is that she was voted in in her high school. That that was a fun joke as well. We, we never had that category in the, our yearbook. Either did we, no. and that's why it's hilarious, you know, uh, because I did. Kumail, I, just for, just for the record, I won runner-up for uh, worst hair, just for the record, in high school. <laughs> They're not wrong. I had very long hair. Uh, uh, wait, what's wrong with my hair now? I was getting kind of normally oh. short. Well, it's not that short. I need a haircut. But like, typically, I have pretty normal guy hair now. In high yeah, school, right. I had a ponytail. You were that guy. Oh, my God. I, 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 I had a ponytail. Well, obviously, it hadn't gone back at the side yet, so I had a more full head like thing. Oh it was. It this. was. Uh, Never. I thought it was glorious. I, 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 honestly, the reason why I cut it eventually is because I get sick of washing it and waiting for it to dry. That's that. That's a, a initially why I shaved my beard off, just because mm. oh, I like the aesthetic. But I got tired of of it just being there and always. You yeah. know, it wasn't even that long. But I hate how I yeah. live without a beard now. Like I, I look so baby faced. I hate it. So yeah, you know, the, the beard's here. That's alright. My wife pointed out the white right here. This morning at breakfast, mm. so that, that made me feel great. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's better than all the ginger. Yeah, I, I like my red beard. Nah. you send out. Plus, red beards are like a great Viking name. But, you know, we can use that <laughs> but, <laughs> down the way. But uh, no, so so uh, v- v- super endearing. Like, I, I can't. T- I can't. I did not expect this to be as actually touching and as moving and as as likable as it, as everyone was. Uh, yeah. and characters sticking up for each other all that kind of thing like all of it works super well um, uh, I, I, I actually can't I, I'm actually you know what you picked one that I loved like you, you, you <laughs> did good. it that makes me feel good you, you, uh, you hit it out of the park and I'd... my my only issue coming out of this initially it didn't bother me as much the second time because I knew what was how, how the structure was going to play out mm. the first time I saw it in theaters it felt a little over long just, but that's just the way that the the act structure works because you have an almost epilogue. Yeah, it, it is two hours long, which is a little bit lengthy yeah. for this type of movie, uh, and it does kind of split into like, like uh, there's like thirty five minutes of the relationship, and then yeah. there's about an hour and ten of like the the actual sickness, and then there's everything after the she wakes up, and it's yeah. like that last half hour. Uh, yeah. But there's nothing I would cut. Everything's kind of important. No. Everything works, and it, and it all works, and that's so just being in the theater and going because. I'm so used to the three act structure mm. that any time a movie deviates from that, I notice the time. But watching it at home on Amazon, it was you know, yeah, you know, it, it didn't. I didn't feel it at all this time, and I got I got settled into the jokes more, and because again, I knew what to expect, and some of the jokes hit even harder. Just like Ray Romano, what, the one that you brought up about uh, uh, her drinking the the viscous stuff. Yeah, like that, that one. That like one just killed me sitting on my couch. <laughs> yeah, and I think what's interesting is like it does kind of have a three X structure, but it also has the middle section has a three X structure in and of itself. Yeah, like that that yeah. that middle section has its own three X structure, so it's kind of like a five act story in a in a bizarre way. You can almost argue yeah. that the first act has its own little three X structure, and then the last yeah. act has its own little three X structure. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's kind of what they teach you in in writing school, yeah. like when you take screenwriting about build each of your your acts up. To, to a certain point and then you have to build them down before you start the next one or take them down 
Uh, and, you know, uh, and it's not a by the book story by any means, you know, since it's uh, uh, based on a true story. Uh, and I, so I think that's I like why that too. I, I think true stories sometimes translate to really weird uh, structures because yeah. real life doesn't happen in three act structures. Real life happens yeah. in the way it happens. Uh, yep. That's why in something like Say to Pilgrim's a Slave, where it feels like a Deus Ex Machina at the end, when like you know Brad Pitt shows up and it's like, oh, this is yeah. the this is the get out clause, yeah. and it's like in a regular movie that'd be a problem, but you can't argue with it because that's just what happened. No. Like you, like you have to well, just kind of accept that to a point. Yeah, and, that, and that's where that trope gets it. And sometimes I disagree with it because something in like Twelve Years a Slave is like, no, this is a well known story that this is what happened. That character or that real man showed up and oh yeah, but I, I'm I'm just saying and, and uh. And a and a written story, you normally yeah. that would be a yeah. problem the way that happens. But I mean, it's a true story. It's like, well, no, you, you can't com- completely change it. To, you know, you change some stuff to work in a movie structure, but not all of it. You can't. Yeah. So. But then there's stuff like in Wolf of Wall Street that I hear, but that actually happened. I'm just like, well, but it doesn't actually add anything to the overall story. So I don't. Oh yeah, necessarily yeah. Do that. Whereas here, I feel like, like you said, you wouldn't cut anything because everything from the stand-up parts to his family to even the stuff that you see with Emily's family, it all works towards the overall narrative of Kumail and Yeah, Emily. all all of it works, and it, all of it's important because you have to compare her parents to his parents, how he yep. w- is with them to to with like it, it's almost like he actually gets along with her parents more for a long time because he's honest with them, and that's a big yeah. theme of the movie is being honest to be a, a who you are and being honest about who you are to other people, like you know like that that's kind of his, his big lesson is 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 what he learns not to be and. Uh, so no, and it's because you know the reason why he gets in a fight with her in the first place is because he's lying to her about what his parents expect of him, and he's lying to his parent to his parents about what he wants out of life. So everything, yeah, you know, it, it all works seamlessly together. It's a very tight script. Uh, everything yeah. bounces off each other very well, uh, and like we say, there's a lot of great humor. And uh, yeah, the, it's not often I'll say the phrase that nine eleven joke was fantastic, but that nine eleven yeah. joke was really goddamn it was. good. Uh, because well, because it's funny on its own anyway. Because the, the, the joke at first is that Ray Ray Romano's been a little bit racist because he's like, you know, I've always wanted to talk about nine eleven to you know, to, to, to one people. of you. Yeah, he doesn't say that. He just yeah. says people. Uh, but yeah, but that's the undercurrent. Yeah, you know? um, yeah, that's what he means, obviously. But you know, like, he, yeah. he's, he's he's dancing around it, so it's kind of like him yeah. being this awkward old guy, and then it kind of like turns in like you know, Camille K- 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 takes it and just flips it. And then it's like, and then he has to be. Oh, that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. Like, and like again, I'm not even going to spoil that in this process. Like, that's how good the joke is. Just yeah, don't because it is. And yeah. I had I had forgotten about that joke until the second read or the second watch there, and I was like, oh yeah, that that killed me in the theater. So it it is that good. And again, it, it's based off of Ray Romano, who I didn't know had those chops. You know, like you know Holly Hunter, and, and to a lesser extent, I know Kumail because I've seen him in enough things. But for Ray, who's just always been Ray Romano to me, here yeah. he wasn't. He was Emily's dad. No, it's 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 it's, uh, it's it's really really good. And yeah, and even even some of the other stuff with uh, like there's this one girl who he gets set up with uh, that he drives her home. I mean, we didn't even mention he's an Uber driver, which is just a kind of yeah. main plot point in the movie, really. But uh, he he drives uh, this girl he's been set up with home, uh, uh, Kadia her name is and she's like the one who came back multiple times and she's she's like you know do you want to go out again and there's this real like kind of great awkward scene of him saying like i can't do this arranged marriage thing like we, we can't do this and it, it's funny at the end because she turns around because x-files is his favorite show his ringtones the x-files theme and she turns yeah. around at the end of that scene because she's angry she's like you know i saw like three whole episodes of the x-files and it and sucks uh, uh, well because you feel at that moment that it's not anything about her like had he not met Emily, this could have been the girl. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. You know what I mean? Because because she's, she's joking with him. It seems to be going kind of yeah. kind of fine, uh, and it kind of harkens back into uh, what Ray Romano says at one point because he has a fight yeah. with his, with Holly Hunter, and he confesses to Camille that he uh, had he cheated on her once. He had a one night stand, yeah. and he told her about it afterwards. And he says this weird thing at the end, he's like you know, bizarrely, the way I knew she was the one for me is because once I cheated on her, I felt like absolute dog shit like you like yeah like and it's like that's weird roundabout ways like you have it's like he's like what so i have to cheat on the the, the person to know that it's, she's the one uh yeah. and it isn't do that but i think that's kind of what this scene is it's like yeah he's presented with this this this, this perfectly nice woman who seems to be kind of into him it would even fit with what he fa- his family wants it, like all the pieces yeah. are lining up and it's like no i feel like shit because i 
Emily's the one for me, yeah. and they, they, it kind of works in that way. But it also works in a maturity way because this is him finally yeah. starting to accept that he can't lie. Like this is him being yeah. honest. This is, this is actually one of the first examples in the movie where he has that moment where he says, "No, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest about this because it may hurt her right now, and she is pissed about it." But in the long run, this is much better than me lying to her. Yeah, for... he's, he's letting her off gently as possible, and you know, uh, and and so for her to turn around and say that the X file sucks. I feel that was just a him, you know, make make Kumio feel better than that he cut cut it loose because like she doesn't even like my favorite show. This is fine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think it was just a dig. She wanted to make him hurt. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think that's what uh, it was. I feel like it backfired, but yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, fact, uh, what, he's what? he's great too. We we talked about that earlier, but I feel mm. after seeing him, you know, sometimes I think it's more of a challenge to play yourself in a movie because. I feel he always plays Dinesh from Silicon Valley, where he's, you know, he's not a stereotypical, like, Indian Pakistani guy, but there's those elements here, and I, I don't feel he does any of that here, because he has the benefit of playing himself. Uh, Do you know, so, I actually, I learned something this movie. I did not know Pakistani only came uh-huh. into existence in the 40s. I, I thought it was, yeah. I, when he started that setting, so it split off from India, I was like, oh, he's going to say, like, 18 or 19, 17 something, yeah. or it's like, no, 1940, I think 7 it was, and I'm like... Yeah. Really? That recent? <laughs> I thought. And it and it's still so because I watch a lot of travel shows and it's still so contentious between the two countries. There's a changing of the guards along the border that is like, if something goes wrong there, those two they're going at it. Oh. So everything in that area is by the book and and what uh, it's it's super yeah, fascinating. Yeah, you, you learn a little bit. You learn a little bit. One small moment I just want to point out. You you, you mentioned the uh, forcing. Uh, I was going to say Zoe, uh, forcing Emily uh, to uh, watch the, uh, the, the Dr. Phoebe's movie, right? Uh, yeah. he's, he's like, oh, they turned to Vincent Price. And I was like, oh, I, I bet I know what this movie is. And it came on, and it was like, oh, the music. And But the moment I love here is she, she's questioning, she's like, so is this like a test? Is this the, the thing you put on uh-huh. to see if the girl's worth keeping around? And he's like, no, I've never shown this to another girl. It's like, yeah, but how many like these B movies have you shown to girls? Like, this is oh. not a B movie. Like, but my favorite part of it though is like she 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 pretends to get like bored. She starts she starts yawning yeah. like within like a minute because because he's not watching the screen. He's just watching her. He's just, like, mm. yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm just yawning. That's what happens when the movie's really boring. And like again, it was it was chemistry. Uh, and to, let's be honest here. This is the most relatable chemistry ever for me. Like yeah. that, that, the idea of like you know I'm going to I'm going to show her a movie and see if see if she likes the good movie. Yeah. And, you know. So do you have a go to? Or do you just have like a? Oh a no, I, I I don't I, I don't there's no, there's no this is the thing right? Sure, I I, I like they thought of I, I want a partner with a reasonable taste. Don't get me wrong, but it's not there's there's no one like no no you, they have to like this or hate this one like like it's you know it's a collective it's like you know generally do you have really shitty taste generally do you have decent taste yeah. that that kind of thing no there, there's no go to. Uh, it was it was the fact that she loves Ocean's Eleven as much as I do, so we we bonded on that. And the second one is I had her watch back to back Batman Beyond episodes, and the fact that she was into them this and it was so out weird. of the past. This is so weird. Yeah. Um, uh, that said, Ra's I- al Ghul, and she was into it. I was like, okay, this is this is good. That that said, there'll be a giant red flag for me if someone ever says to me they hate Back to the Future. That that's the one that feels like how can you hate Back to the Future? Like, yeah. come on now. No, my wife's tired of Back to the Future, but that's because I try to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I throw it out there at least once a month if we have nothing to watch. But nah, yeah. I feel like I mean honestly, I don't mind if uh, a new partner's not seen a lot of my favorite movies. I actually, I, right. I get to show them all to her. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually a, kind of a plus. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and obviously I watch a lot of horror movies, so if she likes horror, that's cool. Although yeah. if she doesn't like horror, that means she's going to be more scared, and that also has its benefits. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've okay. I've learned to like ghost movies because of my wife because she loves ghost horror movies, mm. and we watch them all even if they're terrible. She insists, so you, know. you you have not watched them all. I'm I'm going to get on the I'm going to no. uh, get in contact with Ashley and give her some new suggestions because yeah. we we have done some in screams that I know you've not seen, Matt. So I'm going yeah. to pass along. When I say them all, I mean the most well known ones. The you know anytime one comes out like. As soon as Paranormal Activity I, 4 came onto Netflix, like she had a countdown ready. I, I, like not I'm, enough to go to the theater, but... I, I'm sending a message because uh, she used to see The Bye Bye Man and you two are going no, to watch that together. No, 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 no. Because I have a friend, I have a friend that 
What, said, really? It, it, a friend? Up, you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have a friend that loves bad movies. Like, that's his thing. He goes to the to the local record shop that has resale stuff and finds the worst stuff. He went to go see The Bye Bye Man knowing that it was going to be terrible. And his review was, so basically you're telling me I could take my story from when I was seven and turn it into a big budget horror movie? And by big budget, he means just like an actual movie that came to theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the fact that even he has his limits with the Bye Bye Man, no way. Not doing it. I, I watched, what was that one that we did a commentary on? Uh, Darkness, Darkness Falls. Falls. Yeah. You're telling me Bye Bye Man's worse than Darkness Falls, and I don't, I don't care to find out. <laughs> don't think it, don't say it, don't see it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So what we're talking about, oh yeah, we're talking about the test okay. movies. What, what do you, what do you yeah. test the new partners with? Uh, yeah. Nothing. I mean, I, you know, I sum up. Like, I, I just like, honestly, like, it'd be weird if she didn't like movies because that's such a big part of my life. But beyond that, I mean, I don't have any specifics. If she wants to make fun of me for what I like and whatnot, I don't care. Yeah, well, that's, as yeah. as long as she puts up with it, that's my only, <laughs> that's the barrier. <laughs> well, she complain that I watch movies all the time. No? Great, she passes, right? We're, we're good. True. True, true. That and a pulse. That's all you need. <laughs> a pulse. <off>. Hopefully. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, big sake. I'm glad that you enjoyed it because I felt this could have gone either way with, with yours. So when you said that a bold statement, I was like, ah, oh, crap. Now I have to go into defense mode. No, no, no. This I'm is glad the, I did. This is the best thing you've picked. And... um. I'll I'll be curious to see if you top it anytime soon. Yeah. Curious. Um, see. Yeah. So no, uh, I I highly recommend the big site. I think it's, I think it's very genuine. I think the characters are great. I think it's very funny. I think it's very dramatic. It's very touching. Uh, all of it works. Uh, I highly recommend it. So, uh, I guess with that we'll rate the rate the movie out, yeah. uh, out of ten. So what are you giving it, Matt? Oh, this is a nine point five. Nine point oh. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Nine point five. I thought I was going high. Nine point five. Yeah. No, it's a 9.5. This is, spoiler alert, unless something knocks it off coming up that I've seen, this is my top movie of 2017. Don't spoil that. We did yeah. an award show in at the yeah. end of February, start of March. Pete, I still have like six or seven movies to watch that could unseat this possibly. Yeah, but so. I'm still, so, I mean, I've got like a dozen movies I'm going to get to before we do that. I'm still not going to tell them what number one is now because it could still uh, be there. And, yeah. no, no. I will. I will say though, you want to tune into that because you're not going to find a wider gap of movies between Pete and myself. Yeah. Uh, or Connor. Connor's Carter. going to be on that as well. Yeah, but I feel like me and Connor. Or Connor splits the difference between us. I feel like there'll be some crossover. Yeah, he'll 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 bridge the gap, I suppose, in a lot of ways. But exactly. Uh, but there'll be very uh, different top tens and award picks. Oh, that's it. I mean, the the way that award show is going to work, there'll be two videos or two episodes. One will be the awards, which is, you know, actor, actress, all that kind of thing. And we'll debate yep. who gets each award uh, as a group. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's that episode. And then the other episode is our top ten lists, uh, which we'll cycle yeah. through. Uh, that's, that's kind of... Same, same, we did something similar with the TV. But obviously, the TV's all kind of done at the end of the year. Whereas movies, you're still yeah. kind of catching up for the next couple yeah, of months. Well, because usually we do it at the end of the year, like everything else. We, we had before, the, yeah. Yeah. But with the fact that there's still so much that hadn't been released by the end of the year... Uh, we wanted to do it closer to Oscars because that's, you know, the BAFTAs and Oscars and all the awards happen around the same time. Yeah, it's awards So season. we kind of want to, yeah, we want to put it around there, give us more time because there's so, still, again, six, seven movies they need to see. Yeah, so that, that's that's coming up uh, around then. But hey, so uh, my, my rating, uh, by the by, I never got to my rating. Uh, huh? I, I debated. Uh, I think for now, I'm giving it an 8.5. Huh? For now, and it could rise uh, with time and repeat viewings. Uh, it maybe it could make go down to a solid eight. I don't know. But right now, I'm saying 8.5. Uh, I really liked it. It was a great movie. So, uh, that, that is us. That, that, is, uh, that is the big sick. So, let us know what you think of the movie in the comments, if you have seen it, of course. Uh, like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters. Uh, we mentioned that this show is obviously voted for by patrons. Head over to patreon.com slash TV If you want to support the show and the channel, get the chance to do the voting yourself and all the rest of it. Uh, there'll be a link in the description uh, down below and whatnot. So, uh, are all links to it. So, that, 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 that is us. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you very much once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching movies and we'll see you next time.